Welcome back. For the past few episodes I've been struggling with this uh, problem where some clicks will place blocks on the ground and some clicks will place them attached to hard points. And the problem I had is that uh, uh, the one where you stick things on the ground can allow you to do some crazy stuff. Um, so what we're going to do is instead of allowing you to place on the ground all the time, we're only going to make it so it happens once. Normally this sort of thing, if you have the same problem with your code over and over and over, it implies that you've mis-implemented something and you need to go rip it out and replace it. Um, and what we'd actually want to do is compare the bounds of our newly placed block to the bounds of every other room. Um, but that's kind of not how I want to do it for complicated reasons. So instead I'm just going to make it so that you can only place once. on the ground, and after that you can't. That actually means that all of this stuff here we don't need to worry about uh, being here. We can do it right here in the terrain. So we can place the very first thing on the ground, and after that, we can't. So we don't need any of this stuff anymore. We can convert this back into a void. And while it seems like uh, it might be uh, uh, a disappointment to go back and delete a lot of the stuff you did, this is actually always a good thing. Um, if you're getting rid of stuff that you don't need anymore, that implies that you've implemented something that's a lot smoother and easier to use, um, and will be able to be maintained with a much easier pace. So here you can see we can still place on the ground the very first time, but after that, we can't. And that means that we can only snap together, which is fine, that's exactly what we would like. Uh, but we do have the problem where um, we can snap together in awkward and overlapping ways and snap together with hard points that we've already snapped together with and a whole bunch of other slightly nightmarish situations. So that's what we're going to spend the rest of the episode fixing. So the first thing we need to do is here in placeable object we were using an array but we actually need to use a list. And the reason for that is because lists will allow us to delete hard points from out of the middle without worrying too much about um, uh, leaving gaps. So we go back over here and we change this so that it's all Lists use count rather than length, and that's the same thing we're going to run into here. That's odd. Did it just translate over into a list without any issues at all? I didn't know it could do that. That's actually rather nice. Uh, I changed the type from an array to a list, but it kept all of the elements intact, which is uh, not what I expected, but I'm happy. So here in cursor, when we place this hard point, when we place this object down, there are two hard points that are involved. There's the hard point on the object we're placing, and there's also the hard point on the object that we're targeting. So we have to disable both of those hard points. So the thing we do here is we go ahead and um, delete the hard point from both objects. So we take this hit dot transform or hit dot point. So vector three hit point equals hit dot point, and then we just go through and make sure that uh, uh, the hard points involved are going to be disabled. So um, uh, hold on. Uh, that, that's not the best way to do it. Okay, so first off, the hit dot transform dot game object. This hit point here is going to be the same, so we can just straight up delete that.
All right, um, placeable object target equals hit dot transform dot parent to get placeable object. So this gets the room on the ground that we're targeting. Oh, I don't know what just happened there. Uh, and then we say target dot hit points. Uh, no, sorry, target dot hard points dot remove hit dot transform that game object, and then we say destroy hit dot transform dot game object. Now we have to do the same thing for the object we've just placed. However, for that it's a little bit more difficult because it's not the hard point that we passed ourselves. It's not this hard point because this hard point belongs to the cursor. Instead it's the same hard point but on the newly created object. So some reason it forgot that this existed, I don't know why. All right, so what that does is it should destroy it and then remove it from the list so we don't have any gaps in our list. Uh, that's your fault. That parsing error is your fault, Mono. You, do, you randomly deleted it. All right, there you go. Cetroy. All right, so when we put this down, it's all happy and good. When we click here, boom, see? No hard points. And that means that we can't have that mistake where we can cut through each other quite as easily. Now we can have some mistakes where we can build something that conflicts with itself. For example, if we do this, we can still place that such that there's something terrible going on. So we're going to have to be careful for that sort of thing. Um, and we're going to have to figure out how to deal with that. And we may actually have to go ahead and do that whole bounding thing I was talking about before. Because obviously this is just chaos. Um, so the, uh, uh, the thing we're probably going to do next episode is make sure that the rooms don't uh, overlap with each other via a bounding box method.